Hello, and welcome back. This is Mr. Ho, and we are now starting Chapter 9, Articulations. Articulations are movements at the major joints of your body. Along the skeletal and muscular systems, we have the ability to run, walk, jump, and move our bodies from one place to another. None of this would be happening without articulating joints. Let us begin. Articulations are any body movement occurring at the joints, where two bones connect. The joint structure determines the direction and the distance of movement, or ROM, range of motion. The joint strength decreases as mobility increases. So the more movement a joint allows, the, the more it is prone to injury. If you think of a baseball player when they throw or pitch a ball. Your shoulder has the greatest range of motion, but unfortunately, over time and over repetitive stress, it can damage a joint. So remember as we move on, the more movement that occurs at a joint, the more dangerous or injury-prone situations can occur. There's two methods of classifying uh, movement or articulations. Number one, functional classification is based on the range of motion of that joint. Some joints, like the shoulder, are supreme and can move in any direction for the most part compared to joints like um, your, your ischial tuberosity of the, of the hip. Um, basically, all you can do is sit on the ischial tuberosity. And also, uh, your knee can just go forward and back in, in knee extension and flexion uh, compared to the multiple movements the shoulder can. So, functional classification is that. Number two, structural classification depends on the anatomical organization. So depending on how much movement can occur, it depends on how many bones are the joint and how much movement is going to occur based upon what is connecting those bones. Functional classifications are seen as synarthrosis, which is immovable joints. So these joints don't really have any motion there. Amphiarthrosis means slightly movable joint, a little bit of movement. Diarthrosis is a freely movable joint, completely moving. Structural classifications are based on four things. Bone, the fibrous tissue, cartilaginous tissue, and the synovial tissue there. Um, these pictures here uh, will define uh, different types of structures. So, for example, you have fibrous which is a suture, it would be a great example, which we learned. Um, a gumphosis is your gums. Synchondrosis is basically when cartilage holds two bones in a tight junction. Synotosis is basically very rigid, almost immovable joint. Syndesmosis is when the bones are connected by the ligament. Um, parts of the tibia and fibula are an example at the elbow joint. A symphysis is a union of two different bones connected by fibrocartilage. The best example is the pubic symphysis of the groin. And um, you have different types of movements depending on the synovial joints. These are the range of motion that allow various joints to occur. Typically, you can find them at the ends of the long bones. All right, so let's talk. Synarthrosis, or immovable joints. They're much stronger than those who have a greater range of motion. They are the edges of bones which allow them to touch or interlock with one another. There's four types of synarthrotic joints. Number one, you have the sutures, which are found in your skull, gumphosis, which are found in your teeth and gums, synchondrosis, and synostosis. Suture bones are interlocked, bound by dense connective tissue. They're found only in the skull. Gumphosis are found basically in the socket of roots belonging to teeth. Synchondrosis is a rigid cartilage found between two bones, usually in the epiphyseal cartilage of the long bones. Synotosis is a fused bones immovable. So these are other parts of the skull which definitely cannot move. Amphiarthrosis, they're a little more movable than the, the previous. They are stronger and um, a little bit more freely movable. There's two types of those, syndesmosis, which are bones connected by ligaments, and symphysis, bones that are separated by fibrocartilage. There's a difference between ligaments and fibrocartilage. 
ligaments connect bone to bone and they're actually a little bit less dense than fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is, um, is a lot rare in the body compared to ligaments and they do have a tighter connection between bones. Synovial joints continued. Uh, D-arthrosis, also called movable joints, they can be found at the end of long bones. They do articulate with the other bones and they are lined with a, a, a connective tissue known as synovial membranes. Articular cartilage or pads found within surfaces of the other joints and they are moving with some lubricated joint called synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is a fluid that is secreted by your joints which allows lubrication. Think of synovial fluid as a car needing oil change, which helps the gears move. The synovial fluid, it contains uh, what we call proteoglycans, which are um, the actual protein slash um, minerals and secreted fluids that allow you to keep the joints um, fluid. The function of the synovial fluid is one again, lubrication, nutrient distribution, and shock absorption. The accessory structures include cartilages, fat pads, ligaments, tendons, and bursa. Cartilage help to cushion a joint. Um, the fibrocartilage pad in your knee is called the meniscus, which allows bones from rubbing on top of each other as you jump, run, and walk. Fat pads are superficial to any joint capsule. They protect the articular cartilage. They're kind of like cartilage, but they're actually um, filled with more adipose tissue. Ligaments support and strengthen joints. Again, ligaments connect bone to bone. When you injure or sprain something in the joint, the ligament can possibly tear the collagenous fibers. Tendons connect the muscles to the actual bone. They help support the joint. Bursa are singular borsa meaning a pouch. These are pockets of synovial fluid and they do cushion areas where tendons or ligaments rub. For example, in your knee you have multiple bursa, anywhere from 10 to 12. Factors that stabilize these synovial joints. You, you can prevent injury by limiting the range of motion. Collagen fibers, the articulating surface of the meniscus, and other bones, muscles, or fat pads help to stabilize these synovial joints. This is a synovial joint, a sagittal section, and you can see here in the middle where the synovial membranes are. You also have cartilages that help to smoothen out the contact between these bones. This is a sagittal view of the knee joint, which allows you to see where the meniscus is uh, basically located in here to absorb the shock. Also along here you can see where the patellar tracks in front of the anterior knee which is located on the right side of this picture. The fat pad is basically extra amounts of fat from your body which helps to you know, somewhat absorb the shock to help the meniscus as well. When you have an injury you have two different movements of the joint. A dislocation is a bad thing. It's an articulating surfaces that is moved out of its position. A damage to this area can damage your cartilage, ligaments, and the joint capsule. When you dislocate a joint, it is quite painful and the bone usually sticks out of place, causing a very strange deformed uh, body surface and it's quite gruesome. A subluxation is a partial dislocation or where the bone pops out of the joint and re-enters that joint. Note, if you dislocate any body joint, especially your shoulder, the likelihood of re-injuring and dislocating that joint has increased by 40 to 50 percent. There's three types of dynamic motion. You have linear movement, which is gliding, angular movement, which is when the top of the joint angles to different positions, and rotation when the actual joint is stable but just rotates in a circle. And there's three different axes of dynamic motion. From left to right, you can see these initial gliding, angular, circum, and rotating movements. Let's take a look at them closer up. Initial position is when the actual joint stays still. In this case, the pencil is not moving anywhere and it is 
straight and vertical. Now, when you have a gliding motion, you have a linear movement in usually two directions. Um, you can go towards, back, side to side, but everything stays still and vertical, just moving from side to side, as if you were walking. Now, when you have an angular motion, you do have possible movement, but you're causing an angular tilt. In this case, the pencil moves, but the tip is stationary. It is moving. Uh, the shaft does change the angle relative to the surface. So in an angular motion, you have the bottom of the joint stabilized to the ground, and the top will be rotating in a uh, 360 motion. Circumduction is a form of movement where one end of the joint continuously moves in a 360 outwardly. Now, compared to the one I showed you before, uh, the angular movement can go in any direction, but when that becomes a circular 360 motion, then it becomes circumduction. Rotation is any motion that shows um, a rotating movement. Now, the tip of the point stays the same, and the angle and shafts remains unchanged. The only thing happening here is there's movement in a 180 to 360 at the vertical plane. Gliding movements occur when two surfaces basically glide past each other. Uh, for example, between the carpal and intarsal bones. Flexion is basically movement that reduces the degree of a joint. Uh, extension is an opposite where movement increases the angle of a joint. Hyperextension is when you go beyond the normal anatomical position. So this is when someone, let's say, sticks their hand out straight, but their palm or wrist actually goes beyond the elbow joint. It kind of looks like someone's going to take your arm and break it at the elbow going upwards towards the sky.